Hello, hello, welcome to our live where we are discussing the very anticipated question whether it's gonna be Miss Universe or Miss World that you should choose as your next pageant. All right, we have Nikita. Nikita. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you doing? Good morning. <laughs> I'm guessing it's good morning. I've got morning my right now. I've got my coffee with me. I need this today. On a Sunday morning, I've woken up to talk about the big question, which I'm very excited to get into. And I see so many people have already joined, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Yes, let's go ahead. Do you want to like start with just like introducing the whole topic to them and just then starting off with that? Yes. So the big question is also because these days i've been hearing from a lot of contestants and both of us as pageant coaches like we're so in the industry already we know the contestants perspectives the dilemmas and some of the most common questions that we've been facing right now is which competition do i go for we know that this year the femina miss india auditions right now are just getting delayed postponed we don't have any information on when they're gonna happen guys so please stop asking us in the inbox because we don't have any official information either but what's happening is we do know that Miss Universe India registrations um, are open. We also have Glamour and Supermodel India, which is going on. And from what I know right now, I think pretty much the wildcard entries and the interviews are done. But what I'm seeing in a lot of contestants is because there's no information on the Miss India auditions, people are just not taking any action at all. Like they're like, we're just going to wait. But there are other pageants. And what I was like we were talking earlier is that we get that there's one brand name that's really really popular but you have to look at pageants overall as an opportunity and a platform that offers you a lot more than just a crown and a sash right so let's talk about some of these things today and anybody who's joined the live you know if you're new to pageants and perhaps you don't know what was happening five years ago or ten years ago you know so th this conversation might be really helpful for you too in order to how do you make the choice basically it's not about miss world or miss universe alone it's about how do you choose which pageant to compete at and it could be any even a local pageant that you're going in so the tips that we're going to discuss today are going to help you even if you just want to compete in your regional local area right so but just to start it off, um, let's talk about the eligibility criteria so that you guys know whether or not you can go for these pageants, these two pageants that we're talking about today. So, like, do you want to talk about how do you get into Miss India? Yes. Okay, let's start with Miss India because that is something that has very slightly, I think the eligibility has, I think the max that has changed is the height criteria, which has gone down to 5'3". But apart from that, something that remains common and has been the same across decades for now is something that I would like to discuss first. I think as we all know, also guys, you should look at our uh, pinned posts as well because we have, we are the talent partner for Miss India. So we do have um, the eligibility criteria listed down there as well. So I think instead of asking questions, sometimes I just send people our posts and we're like, it is right there. It's the first post, just read it. Uh, but <laughs> Putting that together, uh, in Miss India, the eligibility criteria, and I've noted this down so I don't miss it out, is as follows. Your age needs to be from 18 years and it caps at 25 years. And you need to be 5 feet 3 inches and above. Yes, 5 feet 3 inches, how, whatever that converts into centimeters. We have questions that say we are 5.25. 5 uh, guys, they're really, really strict about age and yeah. they have like a measuring tape right there where they, you know, whatever, even if you have a doctor certified um, height certificate, which says that you're a certain height and there it doesn't match, they take what they uh, measure into account. So you just like, don't try to fool around with your height in that aspect. Um, you need to be single. You need to not ever be engaged. You should never have been married. And um, if you have an Indian passport, yes, you are eligible to be uh, the title holder, the main crown winner, along with the other runner-ups. But if you have an OCI or you are an NRI card holder, you are only eligible to be a runner-up. This is the criteria that Miss India has held very strong. Miss India, uh, which, by the way, again, clarifying, takes you to Miss World. And I think, Nikita, now you can tell us the new franchise, Miss Universe India, and what their eligibility criteria is. Absolutely. So for Miss Universe India, which is no longer Miss Diva, first let's get that out of the way because some people still call it Miss Diva. So guys, Miss Diva exists as an 
organization. However, they don't have the franchisee to send contestants to Miss Universe from India anymore. So Miss Universe India, which is a different pageant now, you just have to be 18 plus. There's absolutely no height criteria. You can even be married, engaged, have children. All of that is allowed. And I hope that we see a lot of diversity in contestants at Miss Universe India this year. I want to get into a lot of details about that. Um, <clears throat> trans women are also allowed, which were allowed even the previous year. The only thing here is how are they going to allow trans women to compete is that you should be a female as of your official ID card. Um, so that's a formality that you basically have to fulfill. Um, and yeah, and that's how it's going to happen. We expect the auditions, I think somewhere around June, July, or correct me if I'm wrong, like June, July is the auditions or the finale? Yeah, uh, they've said that the auditions, clo uh, the auditions or the registrations, sorry, the registrations so, close by May 31st. So May 31st. And First, yeah, so you guys just have a month, actually less than a month, if you want to uh, register for Miss Universe India. And post that, they're going to start with the auditions. Oh, yes, absolutely. And in fact, that reminds me, since the registrations for Miss Universe India are closing on the 31st, um, a lot of people are asking for us questions because our May batch is from like 25th to 31st. So something that we're doing very differently is even the portfolio shoot for the May batch is not being done on the last day. If you are in the May batch and you're shooting with us, in fact, on the 27th of May, so you'll actually have your pictures in time to submit for Miss Universe India in case you're still one of those people who decided to prepare in the very last month. So we do take into consideration those deadlines and we try to have like as many applicants from our school as well to be able to go in. So those are just the eligibility criteria. Um, another thing that perhaps I don't know how many people know this is if you're competing in Miss Grand India, if you're one of those finalists who has paid the 40,000 rupee fee, which is there um, at Glamana Supermodel, in, Supermodel India right now, um, you will get a preference in Miss Universe India. And that, that doesn't mean that you don't need to perform and you just walk in and just like you're selected. That's not how the preference thing works. What it does imply is that the final state audition that's going to happen for Miss Universe India state auditions you get a direct entry there. So it's kind of like, you know, when Campus Princess used to happen and the Campus Princess winners would get a direct entry to the Q&A round of the Miss India auditions. That's how this is going to work. So you basically get a direct entry to the last round. But after that, you have to still compete, perform and prove that you still deserve the position. And that's how you basically get into Miss Universe India. So you definitely get to like go past all of the thousands of contestants in all of the other states. So that's a huge, huge benefit here. Um, if you are planning to compete in Miss Universe India, my opinion as a coach, I would say that why not just go for grand, not because of the preference alone, because you also get to interact with the same set of people and the organization a few months beforehand. It's why not, right? Like it's good to get to know those people. You're not paying to get a preference, but you're paying for the experience. Um, you would have pageant experience. You would have experience with how the organization works, which can actually help you strategize for Miss Universe India better because there are some things that you would have learned. Okay, the, you know, this team likes a certain way of working. They like a certain dress code or whatever it is. Like you can pick up on people's behavior. So I would definitely do that. What happened to your voice? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's just the internet that's kind of making it move a little like okay. around but otherwise okay. it's fine um actually i wanted to ask you one more thing nikita i did see that when we were trying to repost um the eligibility criteria for miss universe india um a lot of people were asking that unlike leva miss diva which did not have a state format um which is why if there were like front runners from just Mumbai, let's say there were like five front runners from Mumbai, they would all make it as finalists. So I think one of the questions here was, you know, why would you take a state format uh, in this um, pageant as a whole? Because what if there are more people? Uh, but do you want to tell them that actually if they're going to have another round towards the end where the girls who could not make it uh, from the auditions, yeah, they're going to be not just 30, but 40 plus finalists. And that is because you, even if you did not make it from the state uh, round, you did not become a state winner, uh, you still get a chance towards the end to audition. So that should not stop you from thinking, oh my God, you know, that the way we calculate for Miss India, if we think, okay, Maharashtra has a lot of competition, let me just not go from that state. But I think that shouldn't be the reason you should be stopping yourself when you're going for Miss Universe India at least. Exactly. And I, I think for a lot of girls, it could also be like a second chance. 
right? Like what if just you were sick that day and you know that wasn't your best. You could perhaps go for the last round once again and just try your luck again. Because I think if even if you improve between your first and second performance at the same competition, as long as you're worthy, right? I mean, they, they're just going to look at the Delta and like, okay, maybe something was off that day and she gets another chance and she makes the most use of it. So, yeah, I think it's really good that they're making sure that everybody gets the opportunity because having a state format or just, just like at Miss World, they have the continental format, right? Um, that's what happens because of the continental format. A lot of good girls don't get the chance to come to the forefront. And um, I like that Miss Universe India is trying to take care of that by giving them one additional chance because the good thing is they're following a state format for the auditions, but they don't have state winners. So we're not really restricted to 30 or 31 contestants. So that's a great thing. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, but having said that, I think, okay, you know, if I had never competed in pageants and I was watching this live, um, I would definitely think twice because Miss India is something that seems to be a childhood dream for a lot of people. And it's, uh, it's been marketed for a really long time and they've held the brand for so long. And I would feel a little uh, unsure because we're yet to see uh, the brand that Miss Universe India is or how Glam Anand would take care of sending delegates to Miss Universe. Um, so are there any, any tips if like a contestant like me probably felt, um, you know, just a little unsure about it? Like what would you say to maybe encourage me in that aspect? Hmm. Um, the brand Miss India is huge and it's huge for a reason. Um, just the timing of it, I would say this year specifically, usually we have auditions done by this point, right? Um, but let's talk about one of the major differences that you will face as a contestant, not from the competition perspective, but from the benefits of competing perspective. Um, if you compete at Miss India, you do enter a contract with time talent. Right. This is something that people have heard. And I feel like on the internet, there's like a lot of, I'm going to use the word hawa about it. Oh my God, contract. Hai. And I remember in your year, like some people even dropped out of the competition because yeah. they didn't want to sign a contract. Um, yeah. And honestly, like it's not that scary. Um, any contract, you can also exit. I mean, if you have to exit, you can exit. There's always a way out of it. Um, so now this could be a perk or a downside depending on the contestant's situation like what if she's already signed with another modeling agency if you're one of those then entering into a contract with times talent you're not really sure like do you need that contract what would it affect your current projects that you're already getting um do you if you already have a lot of good work happening do you want to share commission of the, your income with another agency where you know you have more value than the agency already if you're one of those you're very lucky and then you know i see how that doesn't really make sense but if you're a beginner, just like we say this to any aspiring model also, the best way to get started in modeling is to sign up with an agency because it gets you a lot of opportunities. And as a freelancer, it's kind of difficult to like break into the same doors. In that case, definitely it helps. However, you have to remember that those contracts are also, I think now for state winners, it's like a five year contract, right? So that's one thing. The other thing is, Currently at Femina Miss India, the winners, this has changed in the last few years. And I don't think a lot of people know this. Earlier, the amount of projects you do, you pay a commission two times, right? So even let's say you earn 10 lakhs in a month, you pay 20% of that two times. And that's how it works. This has changed in the last couple of years. And from what I know, now there's a maximum salary that you can have. So even if you do work worth of 10 lakhs, you can't get paid 10 lakhs because your salary is capped to, I think, like around 2 lakhs or something which in a month, which is not bad. It's good money. But then you wouldn't say no to more projects just because you're not getting money, right? You would still do it for the exposure, for the networking and branding and everything. But it's kind of now from a financial perspective, a contestant needs to think, how much money do you make right now? And do you think you would be happy with someone putting a cap on things? Or rather, would you just say, Ki, you know what, I'm going to bet on myself and just work as a freelancer and that's better for me. In that case, you'll have to like just deal with the whole situation very differently. On the other hand, when you go for Miss Universe in India right now, from Glam Anand, we know that there's no contract as such that they're going to bind you into like a five-year or seven-year contract. But at the same time, that also means that they're not a talent agency, right? They don't have that pillow. So a lot of girls are thinking and I know that like some of our students also said this that oh I want to go to Miss India because they're going to give me more modeling opportunities and then 
I, I was thinking, what makes you think that Miss Universe India won't? It's Miss Universe, come on, right? Um, but just because there's no contract, so that contract isn't always a good thing. It's not a bad thing either. It depends on you. Um, we are yet to see how Glam Anand as an organization will give opportunities yet. So I would say, I get it like Miss Universe India is a new pageant, but like look at Miss International candidates, right? Uh, look at the Grand India candidates. And I would, if you were, like, if I was competing, what I would do is talk to all of those previous winners to get an idea of how the organization is, what kind of exposure and projects did you get after you left the competition, right? Um, that's the kind of research anyone should do. Basically look at like, if you competed in 2018, look at that same girl in 2020 and see how the title really helped her. That gives you an idea of the return on investment you're going to get from just even competing at that platform. So that's just something homework everybody has to do. Um, and I wanted to ask you, in fact, like, because you were in Miss India more recently than I was. Um, how did you feel? Of course, there was a contract. And like, how, what was your experience with the contract, the kind of opportunities you get after winning? That's actually very interesting. And, um, you know, while I was listening to you, I, uh, I heard someone say that, uh, you know, we still need to keep it constricted to the main question. But I think a lot of people are not realizing um, and I think the question itself states that you are not, you're just thinking about the main title. You're just thinking about maybe just walking in pretty gowns on the stage, but your life after should also be looked into. Uh, and I say that with experience because very often than not, um, we look at pageants as the end goal. Like even for me, I think I did not think what would happen if I didn't win, because I think a lot of people don't go with that mindset and you're just like everything else that will come along will just be like a byproduct of me winning and I'll deal with it because that's the main picture. Um, but I think what you end up with, yes, is a modeling contract. You end up with Times Talent. And for somebody like me who had never modeled before, um, this was something that I was aware of and something that I was looking forward to. I thought that whatever would come along, I'd kind of ma maneuver along with it. But I wanted the contract because I wanted to start modeling and start acting, especially in Bombay. Um, so I felt like this would just be great. You know, I felt I had a personality of a pageant girl because it kind of had an amalgamation of not just your ramp and not just your question and answer. I felt like I stood well in that place. But I also thought after that, I could make use of that contract. And what happens is after you get the contract, you are all eventually a part of Times Talent, right? Mm -hmm. I remember I was walking certain ramps with Miss Supranational of the previous year, or I was competing in the same projects, which there were like a Miss India of a certain year was also giving her same vitals and her same um, interest for. And I just realized, oh, okay. So like after the pageant, there is just one platform and you everybody just, you know, and given the fact that there are so many girls, including the winners and including the state finalists, and they also keep sourcing people from outside. Yeah. It's not like Times Talent is just made up of Miss India girls. Um, and there's, there are other people who are also in the um, agency. And when you see the competition, you realize it's not that easy. It's not as easy as you just sign something and then you know that you know, you're going to get a movie in the next year just because you're talented. Um, if we tell you that Glam Anand doesn't spoon feed you because they want them to be on themselves, um, we I also realize that I think once you sign it, there is no spoon feeding either. It's just the name that you have. But over and above that, it's your talent. And that's most agencies. But I did feel like the expectation I had that Times Talent would give me a certain kind of a push given that you're a beginner. Uh, once you're in there, you're just as everyone else. They're not going to care about the fact that you... Um, you know, you don't have modeling experience or you're new to the city or you need certain projects in order to survive. Like that's, that's not their concern. Just like it's nobody's concern. An agency does not think that way. So the fact that you think that they'll mother you into becoming a successful entertainment um, face is a lie. And that is something I wish I'd known before because I didn't. And um, yeah, so I think that makes it a little tough for you because you then start to explore the space on your own. And that's when if you become a, you get into a, the mentality of, hey, I can do better as a freelancer because I get to choose my projects. And the fact that the modeling industry now 
India and otherwise has become so restricted with agencies the way freelancers used to work in the past they don't anymore like you they probably would not take you as a freelancer because they'd rather deal with an agency in case something goes wrong than deal with you as a person in case there's a payment issue or in case you don't show up they don't want to deal with individuals which is why agency is that important and um yeah so that's when you feel like even if you want to switch agencies it becomes sort of an issue and the, the contract has gotten stricter and stricter over time i know that the contestants after me who are still in touch with me um say that it's been harder for them in order to work around because of the contract mm. so that's a decision you should really think through before signing it in a whole i think and you actually had all this experience i would say a lot more because you even moved to mumbai right exactly. so you were right there um i would say the kind of opportunities i got and the reason we're talk- talking about this is not because like we are disappointed and whatever no we could have done a lot more things but 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 like there's a huge but here the reason this contract is important to think about is because it's an exclusive contract it's not a non exclusive contract so the difference is a lot of modeling agencies like right now i have four non exclusive contracts with four different agencies and still i can do whatever i want because they don't stop me from anything only if they get me work i give them commission type talent puts you in a exclusive contract which means hum jitna kaam denge usme se commission aapko lena hai aur agar hum nahi denge to aap kuch nahi kar sakte which is the part i hated right like how do you stop you don't give me work and you don't let me work which means that i don't get to make any money and i was still happy because i had a full time job going on what right. if someone's modeling full time you just took away their source of income entirely unless you do whatever they want you move to mumbai which is extremely expensive by the way and i like you did that i couldn't do that i was like no why i have my job i'm not going to leave that yeah. job in mumbai um so yeah like i had like and i think the kind of opportunities you also get like people need to know this like you know you get this information and experience once you're in the pageant but as coaches we want you to make an informed choice you're going to get those opportunities like bombay times delhi times da, 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 all the times fashion week you're inherently there but that's only for the year that you are the reigning winner the second there's another state winner or the next batch of contestants then i wasn't getting on any of those offers and then i was like texting i was like are bangalore times ho raha hai why didn't you tell me they were like ha aa jao so when i asked yeah. so they told me aa jao and then i couldn't make it for like other reasons but like then again the payments like it's not like you get annual hikes so like the same amount of money that was good for me in 2019 didn't work for me in 2020 or 2021 right. so then like i wasn't sure and so I had a three-year contract. Now I think in your batch, people have a five-year contract, right? So my contract has ended, um, and because I didn't move to Mumbai, it didn't really affect me that much. Things were very different in my year, but like people need to know these things. Um, so yeah, and on an average, like we are just both state winners. I think, like you said, the ground is basically level for everyone. People think like, oh, as a winner, you'll get a Bollywood movie and you'll become like Yashra Chopra's main face. That's मानुषी के लिए हुआ है बट वट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इज अगेन वाई दिस इज अच अ चॉइस दैट यू हैव टू मेक विद ऑल दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज ऑन एन एवरेज आईव सीन इवन नेशनल विनर्स हैव लाइक अ फोर टू फाइव ईयर पीरियड बिफोर दे गेट एनी बिग प्रोजेक्ट नाउ इफ यू आर एटीन एंड यू वन वेट फाइव ईयर्स एंड इन फाइव ईयर्स यू मेड थोड़ा बहुत इनकम एंड दैट्स ओके विथ यू श्योर बट इफ यू आर लाइक ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड ट्वेंटी फोर आई डोंट नो इफ आई वॉन्ट वेट फाइव ईयर्स टू गेट माई बिग प्रोजेक्ट बींग टाइड with like an exclusive contract so now that's a choice like do you want to make that choice because once you come back from the international pageant which is huge it's a once in a lifetime experience and i didn't do it so i don't know how it feels but i do care about like the next 5 years of my life and i was at a stage where i want more stability and a lot more money and there's only experience hai but like if it's not giving me money to me that didn't matter so much i was like no i still need the money what's going to pay my bills So then you have to think do you want to spend and invest in things that will give you returns 5 years later and so you, everybody comes from different financial backgrounds different stages of life how many responsibilities do you even have like on your shoulders all of that will factor in so that's how you will choose whether or not which competition you want to go for which is why we're having this conversation um I and think I, um before like we go ahead I had another question that popped up right um 
a lot of girls and even our students when we have our swimwear round as well because we teach them for all different kinds of rounds that they might experience in a pageant i think even when we ask them to wear a swimwear in a contained space with just women where no one's really looking and we will not record you if you don't want us to people still um, kind of take a step back and say you know maybe i'm not comfortable with that um i think the perks that comes with going for miss india and eventually miss world would be that there is no swimwear there's no compulsory swimwear around in miss world at least um but in miss universe since there is uh, you will have to um, wear swimwear like go for the swimwear around but um nikita i want to ask you because you've been in this space much longer how do you tell girls who say that i want to go to miss universe because i watched this live and i really feel like that is probably something that i want to try but i'm not comfortable wearing swimwear like like just on a personal level how do you kind of um tell them how that shouldn't be that big a deal um i think first of all it takes time and years of like you know working on yourself i wasn't comfortable wearing things um for a long long time and then i gradually became comfortable because i started working out like that's just something that worked for me i felt like when you work out and you look at yourself in the mirror and like that's a thing that's a daily thing that you do kind of gives you the confidence it's also like how society perceives things how family like that's a big deal um i still to this day like i'm thinking do i do like swim fashion week i'm, I'm not sure because it's weird um so it's an ongoing process but the thing is when you already have taken the decision to step into such a public arena and you also have to see like pageants wearing swimsuits can make people uncomfortable that i get pageants will make you uncomfortable that i don't get it's the thing is wearing swimsuits if i had to do it anywhere i would do it in a pageant because that's the place where it's going to get normalized the most it's going to feel empowering it might not feel empowering on the streets but it will feel empowering inside a room full of pageant contestants pageant judges and trust me like nobody's even looking at you because they've seen too many women in swimsuits they're not that interested um so it's the safest space where you can kind of build that confidence because you don't want to be that girl who's like never wore a swimsuit in my entire life and went into a pageant the whole point of going into it is to build confidence so i would say you don't have to be comfortable with it but think of it as this is my conditioning environment where i'm going to gradually become okay with it and even if your pageant does not have a swimwear around most pageants lead to modeling opportunities and when you're a model you shouldn't ideally restrict yourself to what you're going to wear and what you're not going to wear because it's like saying i'm a chef but then i'm not going to cook non veg at all like you see yeah. it like like 50% of the industry to you um so that's the kind of thing like i think of it like that analogy um so that's how i would tell her like i felt my most comfortable and safest inside the pageant space there are issues in pageants i'm not saying like it's the best thing everywhere like different pageants have different kinds of people involved but when it comes to what you wore and how you felt in it people in a pageant will never make you feel oddly about it that's true that's true. yeah i i would just i would just take up the pageant just by listening to this so guys if this did not motivate you enough <laughs> um then i don't know what else will <laughs> we have a lot of good questions coming up i think um yeah we can start taking up your questions because we've been chatting uh there was this question i wanted to take before i forget because i don't see it anymore it's about the 3000 registration fee in miss india um do you want to talk about what it entails um the registration fee in india which did not exist before and just started from last year uh they have started like an online course that is called the grooming school mm -hmm. um and that is what they basically say that this registration fee is for which honestly on a personal level i'm a little envious about because i paid like 9000 for it when i joined in even though it wasn't compulsory oh. but they had said that this is just something that is also there so you know you should probably look at it and although i was trained and i kind of felt i knew everything i just did not want to leave any stone unturned so i went ahead and i bought it i said yeah i mean i'm spending so much in a pageant i'll just might as well do it and now these girls are getting it for free <laughs> and i'm like oh my god it's the cheapest it's been yeah yeah but that is what they it basically consists of and then you get a username and a password and you log in and you have industry experts which give you like general details about the things you should be knowing before you enter a pageant because 
um, an organization like Miss India organization doesn't strictly say that you absolutely have to be trained, although they prefer it. Um, but at the same time, this kind of makes sure that even girls who have registered and who have do not have the ability to probably train from an institute still are able to understand the basics of what pageantry is so that they don't have to teach you from scratch. So that is what the entry fee there is. But Miss Universe, I was looking at their website yesterday and they also have a registration fee of 3,000. 3,000, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have a question, like, let's say you competed in Miss India in 2022 and you paid 3,000, yeah. let's say. Um, now, if you're going back to compete in the next year, do you pay that again? Because you kind of already have the course, right? Yeah, but you do pay that again. Okay. That's the thing. And that's something that's just not clear because there are girls who have competed last year and there are girls who have again registered this year. And we did have questions where they asked, but I already have the course, so then why should I pay again? Um, but they just say it's a norm. Like we, they do not have probably the systems mm -hmm. to go back and check mm -hmm done it before and not again so they're like hey you're competing again you might as well buy it again got it okay yeah i think it's not just about the course it's also about the arrangements you right. make i mean um i know pageants earlier did not probably um like miss india i think that's the biggest brand that set the norm that it did not used to have a registration fee which is why like now i think it's become norm for people to think and i also said this in my video a few years ago that if a pageant is charging like a hefty registration fee, like check if it's a genuine one or not. But the thing is that came back to bite me myself because these days most pageants have registration fee and it, because it makes sense, right? Because all the arrangements that they're making for you, like even the white tank tops that you're getting at Miss India, right? Um, the contestant number badges, like now that we're coaches and we're running this, I also know like there are so many expenses, so they have to incur it from somewhere, right? It's, it is still a business. Um, I would say 3,000 is a very, very nominal amount for like the kind of expense you're gonna probably be spending around three lakhs in a pageant. So like 3,000 is just to enter it. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have? I think this is one question which I also get on my YouTube channel and I I'm sure you do too. Um, people are asking, I think there's someone asking, if you have stretch marks, does it matter in a pageant? Not at all. We both have them. <laughs> no, everybody has them. As women, when we grow up, we end up, you know, just our bodies change and that results in stretch marks. They won't stop you because of it. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking about the height criteria. Um, I think, guys, if you missed it, we are saying it again. Uh, Miss India, you need to be 5'3 and above. And Miss Universe, there is no height criteria. Um, there's a question. Is it compulsory to get signed to continue in the pageant or after winning? It's actually compulsory. Um, you can't go ahead in the competition without signing the contract. And this is at, uh, I think, state. In Miss India, I know how it worked. At state finalist level, you signed a contract. Yeah. Then you go uh, ahead and you're eligible to win or not win. Um, so the, the duration of the contract changes based on what stage of the competition you are at. So if you're a state finalist, I think it's like now it's three years. Then if you're a state winner, it becomes five years. And then if you're a winner, like a national winner, it's like seven years, I think. Um, so that's how they make you sign the contract, like just maybe like a day before the competition. Um, so you have to sign it. They don't really give you a choice. Yeah. Um, what is miss? universe india doing different this time compared to diva organization other than state level auditions hmm i, th I think i got a chance to speak to nikhil anand at the miss world we, we were both there yeah. um, and something that he was saying like miss diva i know they always had indian designers um creating the wardrobe for the finalists and i know that at least this is what nikhil anand told me <laughs> we still have to see how it turns out uh, but he's in talks with some vietnamese designers uh, for the miss universe india contestants and we know he has good connections with vietnamese designers because of arshana sumbul's wardrobe um at grand last year so i think yeah the good thing that i see like with glamanand i do see that they also have like an international presence and at least like those resources and network um, and it would be exciting to see like how the Miss Universe India finalists also get to benefit from that. Like which other platform is giving you an opportunity to work with international designers, right? Um, so it's a great way to get started. Absolutely. I, I do hear um, a lot of um, backlash that kind of comes uh, 
throughout the years when they kind of start to feel like there's only one specific national designer that designs gowns for all the um fine those you know winners from india who go internationally and then if you kind of put them one beside the other they have the similar design similar yeah. color pattern and that will change because now we have like brains that go outside of that so i think that's pretty interesting to look at um there's another question what are the challenges of winning a pageant even as a state winner if you are just 55 because they prefer tall girls is this a fact hmm okay this height question <laughs> um been asked so often do they prefer tall girls i i would say maybe there is some truth to it but here's the thing it's not impossible for a 55 and 55 is not bad honestly we've seen shorter people um but you will have to work harder it's not impossible it's slightly more challenging because physically and visually you need to just do more in order to stand out in a crowd right like if you're like 511 goes around you of course 55 will not get noticed as much but if you bring it with your personality and how charming you are don't overdo it i mean don't j- jump around but just like have that charisma that no matter how short or tall you are you're just not ignorable at all like i have to listen to you i have to speak to you and my attention just goes to what she's doing and i think uh, maria thatel is like an incredible example um i think she is one of my favorite candidates from miss universe 2020's batch and she was also the shortest contestant um you would have to work harder and that's the kind of thing that you have to be okay with right we all have weaknesses we all have situations in life where you just have to work a little harder sometimes because it's like in bollywood you know the whole nepotism debate that we keep hearing yeah people who don't come from from backgrounds have to work harder it doesn't make it impossible we have tons of examples who made it it's the same thing in pageants even if you want to take the example of the conquer student rajeshri daura like we were watching her grand uh, performance together when we were in you were in india for our september batch and uh, she was shorter yeah. than most of the finalists but she was amazing because she she stood out um because of how well she kind of put her ramp walk together mm-hmm. and how energetic she was so did she work harder than the rest yes she did that's probably why we could see that sort of um that spark in her and which is why she made it to the top 3 So yeah there are multiple examples I don't think you should get bogged down by rumors ever I think you should just have faith in yourself Absolutely there is another question which um, I would love for the lake to take up is like right in our uh, ball game uh how long before a pageant should you start coaching Should you um oh wow um it really depends on the level of preparation you have and i think i we say this multiple times even in clarity sessions i think we have a similar uh, view point in this that if you are someone who's already been modeling you kind of understand you are groomed in that aspect you understand the industry better you know how to walk in heels and you just need a little bit of um, grooming and a little you know roughening like smoothening your edges then i would say still i would say like at least six months because not everybody who's great at walking can talk and can tackle interview questions as well and i think it's a personality shift that you have to bring so regardless of how great you are um, appearance wise i pageants take a lot more than that but if you are an absolute beginner i would say easily one year like minimum would be one year or one and a half i would not suggest anything longer than that because life changes uh, with time and i think things also change but one year is something that girls don't realize this there's a reason we still have registrations coming towards the very end of a certain pageant i think in march we uh, we weren't we skip, we were skipping that month as a batch and we had girls asking but no miss india reg- registrations are closing but at that because at that time they'd given that as the date they were like we really want to prepare and i remember us saying that but the girls who were serious about it have prepared for it you shouldn't be coming in the very last mm-hmm. month the magic's not going to happen in last minute so yeah i think preparation for anything like just how you would not sit for a national level exam if you were going for an mba or going for medical or going for clat for law you wouldn't just prepare a month before right just go through all of the material at once and then hope for the best you would take a year for it i think you should treat this the same way yeah so well i said actually yeah, just because last minute registrations just make us worry honestly yeah. because how do we like lie to you 
that oh yeah huh, it's possible it's not possible i don't think any of us could have done it in a month and if i was eligible after 2019 i wasn't but i i just felt so much more prepared like I, i've always thought this about miss india i was like you know what it was my first chance at miss india and like a year or two later i know like my makeup got better the way i spoke changed and like my walk was now it's better than what i had in miss india so like it's constantly you're evolving and improving and if i could i would go back now but it was just eligibility thing so sometimes you start when you're 18 and then you go back at when you're 20 and you're a completely different person so it took 2 years which is why i say don't even wait so last minute to prepare but then also expect like the if you've taken a month to prepare maybe you're just going to test the waters because realistically at least statistically we haven't seen anybody win the competition with one month of preparation yeah you might just get lucky if that's the case but also luck doesn't take you very far so just because you made it there does not mean you'll make it all the way through so yeah do they ask more money after registration um no they don't not uh, if i think it's very strictly mentioned in both the websites that the grooming fee is the max that they're asking out of you um anything over and above that are expenses that you have to bear which you already know of which is your travel and your wardrobe etc etc but they do not ask you for anything more than that at least as far as i know or it's have experienced um other than this we have a lot of questions coming in which we've already covered in the first half of this live so guys we're going to save this live um and just go watch it afterwards you'll get a lot of question answers to your questions about what the contract is what, whether it restricts you or not we talked about it in detail um i think i'm just going going through the question section like because i think the comments are just like a lot um gayu says will this live stay on the page yes it will yes you can watch it later um and How is it also uh, oh. the live is also going to get posted on my YouTube channel so you can also watch it there. Great. Is it necessary to have a strong social media presence as a model? Do you want to take that up since we are doing personal branding like quite heavy <laughs> recently? Um, so when people say is it important to have a strong presence? Absolutely. But a strong presence does not mean a lot of followers. In fact even like if you look at how the insta algorithm works like it the number of followers actually these days don't matter it's about how much your reach is um so when we say strong presence it means like you know what kind of things are you posting um are you engaging with your audience enough uh, do we know about enough about your life about your personality if you're a pageant contestant does it look like you're competing in a pageant or preparing for a pageant when i go to your social media like if i don't know you and i want to support you or cheer for you oh she's my favorite contestant um will i be able to do that if i just looked at your social media and another thing and i i think i saw this the other day on some other reel and it made a lot of sense that these days like even with modeling agencies are signing models and they look at their social media accounts sometimes they want more of a female audience right because if you're going to promote a product and 90% of your audience is men <laughs> it doesn't really make sense no matter how many followers you have so the kind of content you post should if it's just i will say like just sexy pictures right you're going to end up that's how social media works and i know like for the longest time before i started youtube my audience was like 90% men like i know that because i used to see like 3% women what is happening um but then when i started posting valuable content about pageant preparation a lot of those men lost interest and then a lot of young women started following me so now even if i post if i want to promote a skin care product or like anything that women are interested in um it would make a lot more sense for someone to give it to me to promote because i have those people following me so if that makes sense so like when you're posting content think who's your target audience don't just post mindlessly um and that's going to help you not just in a pageant but also after the pageant which we talk about inside personal branding sessions um the whole point behind this you know live session also is yes the pageant is there yes you're going to win a crown and a title but what are you going to do with it afterwards you don't want to go back to your regular lives and be like okay that was a thing i used to do you don't want pageants to be that you want to be able to utilize this experience as something that changed your life like it did for me and like um we probably never planned on being pageant co- coaches like who dreams of that as a profession growing up right <laughs> um it happened because of pageantry so and it can happen for you too you could be a coach or you could be something else that you never expected to happen only because 
when competing in a pageant, you were thinking not just about winning the crown and the title, which is a bonus, but also about how am I going to capitalize on all of this experience that I'm getting right now. Absolutely. So yeah, that's how presence matters. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree. All right. Yeah, we've covered most of the questions now and the new ones that are coming in, just go back, watch the live or watch our YouTube videos um, because we've covered so many things already there. But I hope this live in general broadened the way you think about a pageant and don't just think of um, a certain brand value it holds or you're afraid to step into something that is yet to prove itself. I think um, Nikita also said that, you know, in the end, we want this live to uh, benefit people and make them realize that you need to consider what the current organization wants out of you. Don't just go back to the times of my role model was Shushmita Sen and Priyanka Chopra and that's why I'm here. Like your goals need to go broader than that because times have drastically changed and they continue to at a very fast pace every year now. Uh, you will see patterns have changed from 2022 to 2023 to 2024. So much is changing and you need to be, if you're interested in it, apart from just being a viewer who then just has an array of questions because you've not done your research. I hope this live in the end makes you realize that you need to first understand your personality and see the winners of the previous pageants and see where you fit and then see what you want out of this pageant. I think it's equally important. A lot of times I think when we ask girls, um, you know, why are you here? And then they end up saying, because this provides me with a platform to help people and to, you want to, I think I got stuck. <laughs> did I get stuck? I, yeah, you did. Yeah, I think in the end, I also kind of want to ask them, but like, what do you want out of this? You know, exactly. like, great, it's providing you a platform, but what are you giving them, number one? And what are you giving yourself out of this? Like, is there a benefit from you apart from the fact that you'll just be a face for a year and then do you just want to fade away? I think that's a question that girls do not ask themselves and we kind of want you to do that. And we've learned this from experience. I wish like somebody was having this conversation with me when I was planning on competing. It would have maybe just things that I did later, I would have done them sooner. That's all. Like eventually we got into it, but it just took us a little bit of time to come to that realization. Um, so yeah, I hope that this session was helpful for everyone in that aspect. And before we wind up, I do want to tell people, everybody who joined here, we are going live again this week. And we have more topics to discuss because we're not done talking about pageants and giving you useful information. Um, one of the topics that Lake was talking about in today's conversation was um, how Miss India has this grooming course. And, uh, you know, it's it, that's a mandatory uh, thing to take up with the registration fee. However, there's a whole different conversation that we can have with respect to pageants and coaching and also pageants doing coaching together. Um, there are things that contestants need to start looking at. Um, and we're going to share more details about this on a post very, very soon. And we're going to be live together again. So you're going to see us just in a few days, in fact. Um, so keep an eye out on the Conquer feed, turn on your notifications, and we're going to be back here talking about some more things that I don't think contestants think about sometimes. Yes, we'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you everybody for joining and thank you Lake for getting me in the session. Pause. Oh. Yay. Okay. I'll see you all soon. Bye.